So let us see a few questions in image compression of image processing. What is data compression? Data compression requires the identification and extraction of source redundancy. So if redundancy is there, means the data is duplicated. And if you can, uh, you know, reduce this data without any loss of uh, viewing or information. So this is uh, data compression. So in other words, data compression seeks to reduce the number of bits used to store or transmit information. So data compression is for, uh, you know, reducing the storage space and for reducing the storage or reducing into number of bits so that it can be transmitted easily. What are two types of data compression? There are two types of data compression. First is lossless compression and the other is lossy compression. Lossless compression can recover the exact original data of after compression. So it is used mainly for compressing database records, spreadsheets or word processing files where exact replication of the original is essential. While in case of uh, lossy compression, this will result in certain loss of accuracy in the exchange for a substantial increase in compression. So if you want to have a compression, you will be losing some data, but you will have a substantial uh, compression achieved. So lossy compression is more effective when used to compress graphic images and digitize voice where losses outside visual or, or oral perception can be tolerated. Okay. Then what is the need of uh, compression? If this is asked. In terms of storage, the capacity of a storage device can be effectively increased with methods that compress a body of data on its way to storage device and decompresses it when it is retrieved. In terms of uh, communication, the bandwidth of the digital communication link can be effectively increased by compressed data at the sending end and decompressing data at the receiving end. So at any given point of time, the ability of the internet or any network channel uh, to transfer data is fixed. Thus, if data can be effectively compressed wherever possible, significant improvements of data through put can be achieved. Any many files can be combined into one compressed document, making the sending and re receiving uh, easier. What are different compression methods? You have run length encoding, arithmetic encoding, Huffman coding, transform coding. What is run length encoding? These are the type of encoding. Uh, you know, they are following some or the other criteria in which some is asking for redundancy, some is asking for repeated patterns and uh, they try that you get some substantial time uh, you know, of compression and you know some compression may be good for images, some compression may be good for some other field. What is run length encoding RLE? This is a technique which you know used to reduce the size of repeating character of characters as the name also suggests run length encoding. So when the characters are you know repeating, this repeating string is called run. Typically this RLE encodes a run of characters into two bytes. First, what is the symbol and how many symbols are there? So RLE can be compressed, we can compress any type of data regardless of its information content, but the content of data to be compressed affects the compression ratio. So compression is normally measured with the compression ratio. Now define compression ratio. Compression ratio is the original size divided by the compressed size. Now give an example of run length encoding. Let us see a simple example. Consider character run of a 15 A's character, which is normally would require 15 bytes. Like this, these are 15 A's. If we code it with 15 and A, this is the symbol and these are the count of uh, A's present here. With RLE, this would only require two bytes to store. The count 15 is stored in the first byte and A is stored in another byte. So you see, there is a compression or you can say, we have uh, achieved this uh, a saving of 15 minus 2, that is 13 byte we have saved. This may be used for any other uh, you know, purpose. 
Now coming to Huffman coding. What is this Huffman coding all about? Huffman compression reduces the average code length used to represent the symbols of an alphabet. So symbols of the source alphabet which occur frequently are assigned with short length codes. So the uh, general strategy is to allow the code length to vary from character to character and to ensure that the frequently occurring characters have shorter code. So it, it, it gives a code. It gives a code. So whichever is coming no, maximum number of times or more number of times, they are allowed uh, to give an, a code. So and that code is small. Once it is being retrieved, you just need the codes because you know that what it, that code represents. This is Huffman coding. What is arithmetic coding? Arithmetic compression is an alternative to Huffman compression. It enables character to be represented as fractional bit lengths. Arithmetic coding works by representing a number by an interval of real numbers which is greater than or equal to zero, but less than one. So as a message becomes longer, the interval needed to represent it becomes smaller and smaller and the number of bits needed to specify it increases. What is JPEG? This is the acronym, this is acronym which is expanded as Joint Photographic Expert Group. This is an international standard uh, from uh, 1992 and it perfectly works with color and gray scale images. In many applications like satellite, medical, you know, you will find JPEG everywhere. What are the basic steps in JPEG? These are the steps. First of all, we do, we take the signal or the image we apply a discrete cosine transformation. Now we get the uh, coefficients or components, discrete cosine components. We quantize them. Once it they are quantized, what we do? We scan in the zigzag fashion. Because if this is the case, maximum uh, the information you will get here only by DCT. So these these coefficients will be having maximum number. So we uh, by zigzag fashion, we only take those values which are on the upper left uh, side of the uh, coefficient domain. Now we, um, you know, the DC component components we apply DPCM and RLE we uh, uh, do on AC components, and then we do the entropy coding. Right? This is how the JPEG is done. What is the transform coding? Transform coding is used to convert spatial image pixels. Transform coding is used to convert spatial pix image pixel values to transform coefficient values. So since there is a linear process and no information is lost, the number of coefficient produced is equal to the number of pixels which is being transformed. The desired effect is that most of the energy in the image will be contained in a few large transform coefficient. So if it is uh, generally the same few coefficient that contain most of the energy in the most pictures, then the coefficient may be further coded by some lossless entropy coding. So in addition, it is likely that some of smaller coefficients can be closely quantized or deleted, even you know uh, ignored without doing visible damage to the reproduced image. Now MPEG, this is acronym. If it is expanded, it is Moving Picture Expert Group. MPEG moving picture expert group. Now it is an international standard again from 1992. It perfectly works with video and also used in teleconferencing. So this is a video compression uh, scheme or technique or method. Now what are the different transforms used in transform coding and how to how do they differ? So many type of transform used in picture coding as you know Fourier, KL transform, walsh hadamard transform, labbed orthogonal, DCT and recently uh, we have wavelets because JPEG 2000 used uh, wavelet. So the various transform differ among themselves in three basic ways and that are of interest in picture coding. First it is the degree of concentration of energy in few coefficients. There are so many coefficients but only few of them contains all the concentration of energy. Now the region of influence of each coefficient in the reconstructed picture. Okay. 
what is the region of influence of each uh, coefficient in the reconstructed picture this is the second uh, you know thing which needs to be seen and the appearance and visibility of coding noise due to coarse quantization of the coefficient how this is going to become which of these will give good output perceivably and you know digitally Find the number of bits to store 128 by 128 image with 64 uh, levels. This is very uh, you know, intuitive. Like this, 64 gray levels are there. Means 64 means how many bits are required? Because we are actually dealing with the bits. We are with bits and bytes is the only way we can uh, is the only terminology used for storage. 64 gray levels. I'm not aware, but I am aware. That 2 to the power 6 is 64. We need 6 bit for the 64 gray levels. So 128 and 128, this is the width size. So 128 into 128 uh, into 6. This is square actually. This is square. 128 square into 6. This is 98304 bits. We want to find it in mega uh, M, 98 uh, MB. These kind of things you can do. Again, what is, uh, you know, Image compression, you can answer it in some other way that uh, it is the process of redundancy, uh, redundancy or reduction of redundancy or you know decreasing the size of the image, all these things. So, with this, one of more question comes what is coding redundancy? What is coding redundancy? If the gray level of an image is coded in a way, if a gray level of an image is coded in a way that uses more code words than necessary to represent. Uh, each grade level, then the resulting image is set to contain coding redundancy. So even if the coding is more than what is intended, that is uh, over coding, that means coding redundancy will be there. Uh, define this interpixel redundancy. Uh, the value of any given pixel can be predicted from the value of its neighbor. Okay, any pixel from neighbor, you can replicate it, you can average it or whatever you have. Neighbors have similar, somewhat similar uh, values. So the information carried is uh, by is, is, this is small. Therefore, the visual contribution of a single pixel to an image is redundant. Otherwise, called a special redundant, geometric redundant or interpixel redundancy, like a run length encoding. Run length encoding you do, you will not be able to, you know, visually uh, see or find out that, oh, something has happened or not because even in JPEG it, it gives a compression of 1 is to 5, 1 is to 10, 1 is to 20 also. But still you can only find little bit uh, you know um, dip, uh, the image has been degraded to to to, uh, to a very uh, small uh, percentage. So you can appreciate it always because you are getting a very good compression out of it. What is psycho visual redundancy? Now, psycho in normal visual processing, certain information has less importance than the other information. Our eye is, uh, you know, attracted to some some uh, some objects, some colors, some patterns. While for some, our eyes will not be. So this information is said to be psycho visual redundancy. Define encoder. Source encoder is responsible for removing the coding and interpixel redundancy and psycho visual redundancy. So there are two components source encoder and channel encoder. Now what is this source encoder? Source encoder performs three operations. First is map it map this uh, transform the input data into non-visual format. It reduces the interpixel uh, redundancy. Then quantizer it reduces the psycho visual redundancy of the input images. This step is omitted if the system is error free. Then comes the symbol encoder. This reduces the uh, coding redundancy. That is, this is the final stage of encoding process. And define channel decoder. The channel encoder. Sorry. The channel encoder reduces the impact of the channel noise by inserting redundant bits into the source encoded uh, data, like Hamming code. What are the types of uh, decoder? Source decoder has two components, symbol decoder and inverse mapping. The symbol decoder, this performs the inverse operation of the symbol encoder and inverse mapping, this performs the inver op inverse operation of the mapper. What is variable length coding? 
Variable length coding is the simplest approach of error-free compression. It reduces only the coding redundancy, means it assigns the shortest possible code word to the most probable gray levels. What are the operations performed by error-free compression? Error-free compression means devising an alternative representation of the image in which its interpixel redundancy are, are, is reduced and coding the representation to eliminate the coding redundancy. These, the, these are the operations performed by error-free compression. So these were basic idea and few questions about uh, image compression. Thank you so much. Take care.